Hello everyone, and welcome back to Max Effort. I just took a brief hiatus of about a year from doing this series, and in case you aren't familiar, Max Effort is the series where I interview elite runners, professional runners, all-Americans, national champions, Olympians. It's basically a podcast in video form, and today is a very special episode. It's the first ever in-person interview. I sat down with Adam Fogg, Fog Dog. Subscribe now to the Top Dog. Uh, Adam Fogg from the Fog Dog Exclusive. He runs at Drake University. As you saw from that intro, he has run 338 in the 1500, 1358 in the 5000. He's a really fast runner. He finished fourth at the NCAA Indoor Mile last winter. He's qualified for nationals in cross country. He's originally from Britain. He moved to Australia, and then now he's here at Drake University. I hope you enjoy this interview, and I'll see you at the end. Adam Fogg with the fog dog, straight to the top with the pace drop. Pace too hot, you can't keep up when he heats up and takes the lead. And all you see is Drake University. So it's time to subscribe for the best alive and go stride for stride with the Batman pride. It's Adam Fogg coming at you with the top dog exclusive. It's Adam Fogg exclusive. Adam Fogg, fog dog, subscribe now for the top dog. Adam Fogg, fog dog. Uh, morning, brothers. I'm, I'm joined today with the man, the myth, the legend, Adam Fogg. And the last time we were uh, together was at NCAA Regionals, and that was you're coming off of a big runner's high there. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, how, how have you been? Pretty good, yeah. Um, that's going to be, what, like six months ago now? Yeah. That was early November. Um, yeah, no, it's been pretty good uh obviously the last few weeks have been a little bit interesting um for anyone who doesn't know i have my appendix out coming up to two weeks ago now uh so not uh not great just kind of in the last few weeks it's been a bit of an interesting time but um i'm on the mend now i'm probably done for the ncaa season but um up until that point i i'd say i was having a pretty decent start to my outdoor season um indoor as well was solid um yeah was kind of getting getting fit getting ready to go for outdoor ran a 1500 pr um raced at drake relays as well and then yeah my appendix uh, yeah. had to get taken out and now i'm kind of just like chilling out for a couple of weeks um had my first run back yesterday though so hopefully i'm not too far from coming back yeah yeah, you already answered my first question, and you had ran 3.38 at uh, Brian Clay, yep. uh, and then 4th at Drake. Um, but yeah, so you got your appendix removed, so if I were to like punch you in the gut right now, would that kill you, do you think? Uh, maybe, yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably. Uh, I mean, we can try it out, so see if I survive, see if I can tough it out, but um, probably, probably shouldn't. The doctor said no, uh, no exercise at all for like four weeks, so... Um, I'm out walking and running. Uh, yeah. Nearly two weeks on, so maybe a punch in the stomach wouldn't be wouldn't yeah. be the best move right now. But um, yeah, no. Hopefully, hopefully not too far away from being able to take the, those hits again. Yeah. But yeah, first first guest, uh, first in person interview with uh, on the Parker Max YouTube channel. So thank you for uh, joining me. And um, but yeah, let's go back all the way to the beginning. You grew up in England. Um, yeah. Where Where in England? So I was born in Warwick, um, which is kind of basically in the middle of England. Um, lived there till I was seven, uh, and then moved over to Australia. Um, and then basically, yeah, was in Australia right up until I came to college um, in 2019. So kind of from England, but grew up in England and Australia. So bit of a weird accent, no one really can ever <laughs> kind of pick where I'm from, but um, yeah, yeah, in America now, so yeah, fun times. So I do want to, since, since you are from England, I want to talk briefly about football. Nice. And you're a Derby County supporter. Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, first of all, sorry, that relegation from, mm. from uh, the championship to League, League One. One. 
So yeah. that's that's tough. But you know, what's your reaction when I tell you that I'm a Millwall supporter? I'm impressed that it's not <laughs> Man United, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's pretty interesting. Uh, I honestly like I, I'm a Derby County fan, but I'm pretty like bad at following it. Um, so yeah, I haven't got any like big rivalry yeah. with you as a Millwall fan. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, but uh, why, why Millwall? So oh. I so I've gone to I've gone to London a few times. Nice. And yeah. uh, we went to a Millwall match, and although you know some of their supporters can be. Uh, maybe not the best crowd, but like there, I just really liked the atmosphere. Oh yeah, and the, uh, it's just a lot more intense compared to like American football. Yeah, and, you know, people chanting defense, but in oh. England, it's just you're not gonna hear level. that. Yeah, yeah. And so I really liked the atmosphere and. Uh, I've been following them for a while. So let's talk about running now. Uh, why don't you just briefly describe how you first got into running? Yeah, so I think um, basically growing up mostly in Australia, um, the school system over there is really pretty good for getting involved with all sorts of sports and running is definitely kind of one of those. Um, everyone does school cross country and then also track and field like we have we have like carnivals at school um, depending on the time of the year everyone runs across country and if you're you know in the top I can't even remember say five runners in your school you go on to the next level and represent your school um, from a very very young age so when I was like eight I won the school cross country and then um, when I was 10, that's the age where you can kind of start like going on to the representative kind of level, I guess, with running. Um, so I, I made nationals when I was 11 for the 800, um, <laughs> ran like 220 and got, got through to my first like state team, um, which was pretty cool. And kind of ever since then, like I've been pretty involved with running. Um, I wasn't really training properly until I was 16. Um, and then when I was around the age of like 16, I got my first proper coach and um, started taking things a little bit more seriously. Um, but yeah, I'd say I kind of, I was exposed to it from like a pretty young age. Um, was a little bit involved with it, still like playing other sports. And then as I kind of got into high school and stuff, realized like I wasn't that good at much else yeah. um, and enjoyed running um, and yeah, kind of just, that's that's the way I got into it. What what other sports did you play growing up? Did you play any cricket? Uh, a little bit actually. Um, I I did one school cricket season and it was kind of funny because I always saw myself as like a decent cricketer, like when I'm when I was playing cricket for fun and stuff with friends. And then when it came to like my first proper season, I I probably played like ten matches and I didn't score a single run. So. My cricket career ended uh, before it really began, but um, yeah, so cricket, uh, and then in Australia, like touch touch rugby is like pretty big, so touch rugby, uh, soccer, a um, little bit of volleyball actually, and then <laughs> running, um, and triathlon a little bit. Um, for, a, for a short period of time, I was a bit of a triathlete as well, so kind of had a big taste yeah. of a lot of different sports, and then um, yeah, narrowed it down to basically just running um, from around 15, 16. Yeah, I kind of got more full time as a runner. Yeah. yeah, so you so you start training seriously around the age of 15, 16. So take us through, I guess, your high school pro progression, uh, training progression. Um, I don't know what they call high school in the land down under, but... High school, okay, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, so... Yeah, when I was like, uh, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, I was racing, um, you know, running for my school. And if I made the next level, I'd, I'd go and race. But really, other than that, I wasn't running. So, I, you know, I'd race and I'd maybe do a 5K run once yeah. a week, um, thinking that I was like training reasonably seriously. Um, and that was it. So I'd pretty much just go race to race, like not really doing anything else. At that age, it's kind of like... I guess just natural talent um, and then you know at the age of 12 or 13 everyone starts to grow and I was a little bit late to kind of start growing so for a couple of years there I was like getting 
smashed by everyone else in my age groups. Um, and yeah, so anyway, a couple more years go by. Um, when I get to, when I was about 15-ish, um, I started running maybe 20, 25 miles a week. Um, got my first proper coach when I just turned 16 and it kind of picked up to like 40-ish miles a week and I thought that was like pretty huge at the yeah. time. Um, that was still doing a good kind of few speed workouts a week. Um, and yeah, my times improved quite a lot from, from when I was like 15 through to when I was 17, 18. Um, and yeah, then ever since then, it's been kind of fairly steady, fairly linear um, coming out of college and stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, I guess training was almost non-existent up until like I was about 15 and then, and then it started ramping up a little bit. Um, yeah, and now here I am at college, so yeah. yeah. Uh, so I tried to find your high school PRs, but it was, it was a bit difficult uh-huh. to find those times. So yeah. um, what were your PRs in high school? So as, as a senior in high school, so like when I'm finishing high school kind of thing. Yeah, yeah so um, 800, I was 150, five i think maybe 156 um 1500 because we don't do the mile yeah. 1600 um 359 when i was 17 yeah. so that'd be equivalent to four, 14, 418 418, 419 yeah. something like that for the for the mile um 3k 8 841 yeah 841 3k so that'd be equivalent to maybe 920 yeah. Two mile, something like that, um, and five k, fifteen thirty, maybe yeah. I can't even remember, um, something like that. But um, yeah, and then in the kind of following years, they really progressed a lot more. Um, with like the fifteen hundred, because I, I would have said in high school I was a fifteen hundred kind of focused runner. Um, that three fifty nine. I was very kind of happy with it to get under four minutes and it seemed like a huge milestone and then yeah over the next few years it kind of improved a lot more um, after I finished high school I would say yeah. Okay. So you ended up going to, you spent two years at the University of Queensland so you had kind of a non-traditional path to the NCAA so yeah, uh, walk us through that time at UQ and I guess how does uh, racing in the, I guess, university system in Australia compare to here in the United States? Yeah, so I did two years of, UQ, uh, two years of psychology at UQ. Um, and like coming out of high school, I really wanted to go over to America. I thought it would be really cool. But I think those times, like I hadn't quite run quick enough to make it like achievable. Um, I think I probably could have gone somewhere in America with the times I was running for sure. Yeah. Um, but I don't think for me it would have been like financially achievable, um, basically. Uh, so I ended up starting at UQ doing psychology. Um, I, I had a plan that I was going to do my four years of psychology and then get my master's in like sports psychology. Um, and pretty quickly at UQ, I realized that that was not going to be uh, the way it kind of worked out because you needed to have some like ridiculously good GPA in psychology to actually get into the sports psychology program so I stuck it out through two years and by the time I was in my second year I was running a little bit quicker um, so I started talking to a few different kind of places in America um, and yeah I ended up committing to committing to Drake and I, I just took the next semester off uni in Australia, chilled out for a little while at home, um, trained and raced, uh, and then yeah, ended up coming over to America in August of 2019. But in terms of like the the kind of racing scene in university in Australia, like it's really not a thing. Um, you kind of just like race for the group you train with, basically. So there's a few different clubs, quite a lot of different clubs actually in Australia. Um, and you kind of just like pick a club and then you go and race at like a bunch of random meets. There's really not a structured 
like university kind of setup and there's definitely no like uh real team environment like no yeah. team cross country or anything like that and people aren't going to college to run like in australia if you're going to university is purely to to get a degree there might be a running team at some some universities and there technically are like uni nationals um which would be equivalent to ncaa's technically but most of the people pretty much all of the people who qualify for like the uni nationals in australia wouldn't wouldn't go close to like being on a team yeah. uh, in most divisions in America. So it's a very, very different kind of setup. There's there's really not um, that team aspect um, or even that training aspect of running in college in Australia um, and certainly no like, you know, scholarship kind of incentives for, yeah. for people who want to go to college in Australia. Um, yeah, if you're going to uni, you're you're pretty much there to get your degree. I yeah. see. So you're basically just running unattached for the most part, and just running, I guess, as an individual for most most things. Kind of. I've got to give a bit of a shout out to the group, the club I was training with on track running. Um, my coach Ben Norton. Um, he had like a pretty a pretty good group, and I'd say that group kind of got me from being pretty, you know, decent. In high school when I was like 15 to, to becoming like pretty good and good enough to come over to America so um, yeah I wasn't running for my college like or uni UQ but I was I was running for that on track running group and that's kind of kind of how it goes and then when you qualify say for, for nationals because there's t- like club nationals like not not college nationals but just like yeah. open nationals uh, it'd be equivalent to like the US Olympic trials that kind of thing um, but just on a slightly lower level because Australia doesn't have quite the same depth um, then you technically are running for, for your state yeah. so pretty different but um, no it was it was decent um, and I really enjoyed it but it's just a very different kind of setup and different way of going about training and racing to what it is in America definitely yeah yeah so you end up at Drake University here in Des Moines, which uh, I forgot to mention is why we're doing this in person. The state meet for high school in Iowa is held at Drake University, so our schedules were able to line up and we were able to get this interview in, which is awesome. But yep. what was your recruiting process like and why did you end up choosing Drake? Because as someone who's from Iowa, I wouldn't have thought that, you know, someone who spent time in England, Australia, Australia, all these cool places, uh, like, why would you want to come to Iowa? And I guess, did you have other school, like, what other schools were you contact, uh, con- like, in contact with and yeah. considering? Yeah, it's a pretty good question. It's kind of like, whenever I go to, I don't know, like a cafe or a restaurant or anything, everyone's like... Where are you from? Like, what are you what are you doing in Iowa? Um, but no, I'm I'm really glad with kind of the way it worked out, and I'm glad I ended up here. Um, I I really didn't speak to that many different places. Um, when I was finishing high school in Australia, as I said, like I wanted to go over to America. Um, so I kind of at the time I spoke to a few. I really can't even remember any of them, but I I signed up for like an agency kind of thing and got a few different uh, schools kind of contacting me, but none of it really seemed like it was going to be a good fit. So that's why I started uni in Australia. And then when I started running a little bit quicker, um, I spoke to Drake, Iowa State, Illinois State, Bradley, um, which are all kind of fairly local to here. Um, Just a few Midwest schools. And then also California Baptist, yeah i think that was it but by the time i was really seriously considering it it was pretty much it kind of came down to drake or illinois state which i think is something that a lot of people especially in the valley conference um missouri valley probably don't even know like i i was properly considering illinois state for quite a while which is like one of drake's rivals i guess um but yeah in the end um I thought Drake would be a better fit um, and as well one of the biggest factors that kind of made me want to come straight was at the time 
um, when I committed. Our head coach was Mark Carroll, who's a double Irish Olympian, 350 miler, 730 in the 3K, um, and 1303 in the 5K. So I was like, this guy, I mean, he's clearly kind of done it all, been at the biggest stage um, in running, and I thought it'd be really cool to learn from him. And it it was decent to start with, and then he left after my first semester, and it was um, just Jay, our coach, now, Jay's the one who actually started recruiting me. Um, I've always got on really well with him, and yeah, he he's been kind of here the whole way through my time at Drake. And when Carol left, um, he kind of took over as the head cross country coach. And I was worried he was going to leave for a little bit. Um, when Carol left, I thought he might as well. Um, but Jay was like, "I'm gonna." stay here we can make it work and yeah he stayed i stayed um and yeah it worked out pretty decently i would say yeah yeah so i mean i'm sure mark like like you said he was a big influence on your decision so uh when he left um i guess did you ever think about transferring and looking somewhere else yeah yeah for sure um In the NCAA, I think if you want to be considered for like transferring or like you want to kind of weigh up the different options you have after you're in a university, you have to enter the transfer portal. And to do that, as in before you kind of officially go onto the transfer portal, you have to get permission, I guess, from your school to do that. And so I feel like basically if you're going to do that, you're going to probably like burn a few bridges in the place you're in yeah. um, and so it's a big kind of if you if you're gonna consider it you kind of have to accept that you might you'll probably be welcome back at Drake as an example you'll probably be able to you know not transfer but you could kind of um, ruffle a few feathers I guess and like you might not you you might not be allowed to come back to, to yeah. Drake basically I think they have to release you if you want to go on the transfer portal and kind of consider other places so um basically yeah when carol left i thought jay would as well and i thought there would be no point me being here kind of without a a good coach um so it was definitely something i considered but as soon as i spoke to jay properly about it um we kind of decided that you know we're both gonna stay here or like i've never really been in a massively strong training group um it's always good having you know some decent people around you but i i was more than happy you know training with the boys we've got here baston has always been really good to train with um and yeah i agree with jay that as long as he stays i'll i'll be here um and with that i was completely happy jay was going to be here i'd be here um and yeah i didn't really ever consider it after that yeah Yeah. it seems like uh you've probably made the right decision and uh probably pretty happy with that so um, yeah for sure but it worked out you came so you come to drake what was it like to spend your first winter here in iowa because that must have been a a big shock (laughs) yeah so horrible (laughs) so horrible um in yeah in australia where i lived for well most of my life really we've never had snow in brisbane on the east coast like i i think the lowest recorded temperature is like maybe one or two degrees um celsius which is 33 34 35 fahrenheit um so it it really doesn't get cold like winter really isn't a thing um like a, a cold winter morning it'll be like i don't know eight celsius or something maybe like 40 45 fahrenheit Um, and then by the middle of the day it will still be like 60, 65 so um, yeah winter was definitely something I was not prepared for Um, just months of like dangerously cold weather, um, snow and yeah everything else that comes along with Iowa winter so um, it was was manageable and obviously you're racing indoor um, and at Drake we're lucky enough that we've got a reasonable indoor kind of track to train on um so yeah you kind of deal with it and make it work but definitely i will winter it's not my favorite thing um but yeah i mean i survived and trained through it um 
just a lot of indoor running, which, yeah, yeah not too fun, but yeah, we made it work. But uh, you had a big season, that indoor season, uh, your first year at Drake. Uh, not you, you started your YouTube channel, The Fog Dog Exclusive, um, ran four minutes in the mile, but then the world shut down, COVID, uh, and your season was over. You go back home to Australia, and then you came back and made big gains. So tell me about like what, what was your training like to lead to those uh, big big uh, performances the next year? Yeah, um, it honestly went really well going home to Australia and just having like a year basically of training. Um, so in March 2020, I went back to Australia um, and I always planned on coming back to America for the August, like start of the fall, kind of get back into it, probably have a cross country season and, you know, get back to just normal college kind of kind of racing. Um, but say in June, July in Australia, it was looking pretty bad in America and they canceled cross country. Um, so yeah, I guess I knew that I was gonna be staying at home a little bit longer. Um, so basically from the start of when I got back to Australia, uh, I knew that I just had a lot of time before I had to be back in kind of good racing shape. So I put in a lot of mileage. I had a really good few months of just like running high mileage, running a lot of strength workouts, stuff like that. Just getting as fit as I could basically for, for whatever was eventually gonna come back um, in terms of racing. Um, and then in kind of August, September, October in Australia, the track season kind of starts to kick into gear a little bit, um, just as it kind of starts warming up um, in Australia. Not that it's ever really too cold, but the back end of winter um, and then into the spring, um, yeah, it, it started to get, get warm and track season kind of starts to um, kick into gear. And I started racing a couple of 1500s um, in Australia from September through to November. Um, yeah, and then I ended up coming back to America in February. So um, I'd say when I came back to America in February and then I came fourth indoor uh, in the mile in March, I was so like, I was in such good racing shape. Um, so I feel like I, I had a really good period of base training throughout um, basically from March all the way through to June, July um, in Australia. And then I kind of started getting pretty sharp. Um, came back to America, really fit for the indoor season. Um, and then by the end of outdoor, I was like pretty tired from, it ended up being like, pretty much nine months of like being pretty peak 1500 yeah. shape. So by the end of NCAA's outdoor last year, I was pretty tired, ready for a break. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really think that year in Australia, because it ended up being like 11 months, I really think that was pretty beneficial for me. Yeah. Um, and I had a good time. I was just like training at home. Um, I had a good group around me. Um, and it was, it was really weird because like I was doing uni online, um, which meant a few late nights and early mornings just because of the time difference. Yeah. Not because I was like staying up late doing homework or anything, but just time difference meant that, you know, you have to be up yeah, three at random classes. times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that wasn't ideal. But other than that, literally, I was just training um, and hanging out. So it was, it was a good year. I look back on... 2020, even though obviously for the, a lot of the world is pretty pretty bad, I'd say in Australia we were pretty lucky. Um, life was pretty normal, and yeah, it ended up just being like a good year to train, pretty much. Yeah, and made big gains on the YouTube channel during that time as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But I think yeah, I went home with like 400 subscribers or something after leaving America in March 2020, and then I don't know, had maybe three three or four thousand when I went back in February 2021 so yeah tenfold something yeah. like that yeah not bad so uh, you like you said you had a great track season and qualified uh, for nationals in the indoor mile uh, you had broken four before that but you went you were one of the one of the last ones in I believe yeah the indoor miles so, yeah and then you finish fourth as an all-american and so I guess walk us through like uh, kind of like 
that race and how how you felt, but also what it was like to go into the race as one of as not one of the favorites. Yeah, to come away with such great success. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I was ranked number twenty five last year o- overall. Um. And then I got really lucky because only sixteen qualify for nationals. Um, I had enough people ahead of me scratch, and I got in um, at number fifteen of sixteen. So I was second slowest going in. Um, but when I saw my heat, so I was in heat two, and I looked at it, and I I knew that I was going to have to have a very very good day to make the final. But at the same time, I knew that on a good day I could do it. Um, there were four people I looked at in my heat: Yusuf Bizamana, Elliot Kipsang, Sam Tanner, and Lucas Bonds. Um, I, I saw those four names and I was like, they're going to be hard to beat. Um, so hopefully I'll be in the quicker heat, and you know, six people will go through from from our heat, and four will go through from the other heat. Um, but. As soon as the first heat got going, Cole Hocker was in there and he kind of took it out. He ran 356 and dragged everyone in that heat through to under four minutes. Um, and at, at, as soon as that happened, I knew that our heat, being the second heat, we were going to just go out and it wasn't going to be quick. Because um, realistically, if it was quick, we'd, we'd have to run, I don't know, 356 or so to 357 to guarantee actually getting one of the you know, time spots into the final. So, yeah, straight away it was pretty slow in my heat. Um, and, yeah, I, I just felt really good. I, I backed my kick and um, I ended up getting third in the heat. So it was, I think, Kip Sang, Bizamana, me, and then Lucas Bonds came through to knock Sam Tanner out. Um, I think that was a bit of an upset because Tanner was, like, one of the favourites going in and then he didn't make the final. So... Um, yeah, and then going into the final, I was genuinely, I was pretty happy to have got there. Um, and I really, really wanted to be in the top eight to get one of those trophies. Um, I, I put myself in a really good spot to try and win it, to be honest, with like 500 to go. I made a pretty strong move, I think, maybe five or 600 to go. Um, moved up into third, um, and then it was just Cole Walker, Kip Sang and me kind of breaking away. Um, and then in the last lap the last kind of 150 i would say i was in a pretty bad way and yeah still women waleed waleed still women he got me on the line um and i ended up being fourth but i was very very happy with that after going in um thinking originally i wasn't even going to be running at nationals then coming fourth yeah it was it was pretty good i was definitely pretty happy with it and i think a lot of people can relate like i remember watching that race and just like you know, cheering for you after watching the YouTube channel for a year yeah. or so, and uh, so it was definitely really cool just to see how uh, you. I mean, you were right up there with the the best of uh, NCAA. So, um, but yeah, you you still have an extra year of eligibility, and I know you graduated from for undergrad uh, just like last week, but. Do you intend on coming back to Drake next year, or what's, yeah. what's the plan moving forward? Um, I really don't know, to be honest. Like, I'm, I'm hoping that I probably won't be using that final year. Um, there's kind of a lot of stuff that I need to like sort out and like um, kind of figure it out. It's all a bit up in the air right now, but um, the plan at the moment is to not be coming back to Drake. Um, <laughs> but I might end up coming back. I, I don't know. Um, with this appendix thing, it's really not ideal. Like, I think um, if I could have gone to regionals, I, I qualified for regionals in 1500, that's next week. Um, if I could have gone to regionals, got through to nationals, and then, you know, had a decent run at nationals, I think for sure I wouldn't be coming back. I still don't plan on coming back, but um, yeah, well, I, I'll weigh it up. And the, the thing, the main thing that kind of makes me not want to come back is the fact that I have to study if I'm going to be running in the NCAA. And, like, I, I don't have much of a problem with, like, doing classes. Like, I, I graduated with my degree. Um, but if I'm not going to get a degree out of it, I really don't yeah. 
uh, I struggled to like I I definitely struggled to like actually get the classwork done if I knew that it was kind of pointless. Um, if I had two more years, that would be really pushing it. But I mean, I'm, some people are getting pretty old in the NCAA right now. Yeah. Um, if I had another two years and I could like know that I would graduate with a master's degree, then it would be a little bit more tempting. Um, but yeah, it, essentially, long yeah. story short, it's all pretty up in the air right now. I probably won't be back, but it's an option. So yeah, yeah, yeah we'll see. Awesome. Hopefully, hopefully over the next month, I'll know a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. But did you end up officially scratching from regionals? Not yet. Not yet. So <laughs> so, still yeah, like... yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so I've I've said in my videos, I've said it on the podcast, I've said it on here that basically my NCAA season is over. Um the Stride Report, I don't know if you know the Stride yeah. Report, they they did an article on me and said like my season's probably over and then yesterday the scratch list came out for regionals and I'm like I'm one of the to be considered. Like I'm I'm there essentially like I'm in the same boat as everyone else who is going. As yeah. in I'm not a scratch right now. So I think a few people will look at that and find it a little bit weird, but the plan is to medically scratch me. I don't really know why, but um yeah, unless I have a miraculous <laughs> recovery over the next few days yeah. like um but i mean jogging yesterday having my first job back felt pretty bad and i'm definitely not going to be in great 1500 shape in a week so um yeah i haven't been scratched yet but i will be so what would you like what what do you think you would do if you decide not to come back to drake do you intend on i guess trying to find a professional contract or going just going into the workforce. I don't know what, what did you end up majoring in, by the way? Uh, marketing, okay. yeah, and minoring in psychology. So yeah, um, I hopefully won't be using that. That's my, in an ideal world, I'll leave Drake. Um, I still need to book a flight back to England, but in the next couple of weeks, um, head home, train up, race at British Champs end of June um, and then hopefully race a couple more 1500s like in Europe throughout July I guess um, then hopefully in an ideal world I'll be coming back out to America and finding a professional group that's like that's like the biggest goal right now to kind of sort something out with that um, I'd say it's a little bit in the works but it's pretty up in the air right now so um yeah we'll see what happens um over the next few months and i mean august is already creeping up on us and if i end up back at drake i'll i'll be back here in like three months yeah. so um yeah we'll, we'll see what happens but in an ideal world i think everyone kind of dreams of like going pro and right. i i would love to do that so um hopefully yeah, leave here, spend a bit of time in England and Europe, and then come back to America. Yeah. That's the goal. Who knows, maybe on Athletics Club wants to add another <laughs> person with Australian roots. So. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah that would be cool. <laughs> uh, but also, I did have a, I did just think of a question there. Since since you're racing at British at the British Championships, and you are British, uh, but also spent time in Australia, do you have dual citizenship there? And yeah. Yeah, okay. so I've got both passports now. Okay, so that's, that's a major flex. Yeah, who knows? Maybe one day I'll marry an American girl, and I'll have three. Yeah, um, and my brother's actually got his Irish one, so I could oh, go wow. for four. Um, but yeah, I I do have dual citizenship. I've got my British and Australian passports, but because mum and dad have moved back to England, and that's kind of like home base again. Um, if I'm gonna run internationally one day, I think more than likely it would be for Great Britain. Um, yeah, over Australia. Yeah, but I have to make a team first. So right. yeah. So I want to move into just a few more questions as the interview is coming towards the end. But let's just talk about YouTube for a little bit. Uh, you started it in like December or so of two thousand nineteen, and yeah. um, I guess what made you first decide to start the channel? Yeah. Um, it was actually January 2020, so basically the same time, but in December of 2019, I was back in Australia for Christmas. Um, I was, honestly, I've got a 
really give a lot of credit to Matt Hansen. We were well, we did quite a bit of running together over that kind of that kind of period. Um, Christmas 2019, basically, I'd come back from college in America. Matt Hansen was like a bit of a runner, like fanboy, basically. Like he, he just loves everything to do with running. And I don't think I'd met him before that that kind of Christmas 2019 period. But he started up like Winnem Elite running group in this this running group kind of based where I lived in Australia and we went for a few runs and he was saying like you've got to start up a YouTube channel and um, you know just film what goes on at college basically so um, yeah I in January 2020 um, I bought a camera I was at this store with my friend Luke in Australia do you know Luke? Maybe Luke Bike McCutcheon. Oh yeah, Bike McCutcheon. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I like, just I just remember the name from your videos. Yeah, yeah, Luke Bike McCutcheon, and we were at um, the shop, and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna buy a camera, and I'm gonna give it a go, and I'm not gonna post anything for quite a while. I'll like film, I don't know, eight or ten videos, and look at them all, and see if I think it's gonna be good, and then. I ended up filming my first video when I came back to America in January 2020 um, and I just thought screw it I'm just gonna put it up um, it didn't really take off straight away I mean it still hasn't really compared to a, I don't know a lot of running YouTube channels it's still like got a bit of work to, to do to really get up there but um, yeah no I, I enjoyed it um, and I thought it was a good way of kind of just like documenting the journey, training, races, um, and one of the things as well, like I, I really do think a lot of colleges do like a pretty awful job with like their marketing and like yeah. there's so much that could be done to like show show what an experience at this uni would look like or this uni and I think I don't know, say like Oregon with the with the new gen and also Oregon's got their own YouTube channel, like and everyone already knows about Oregon, it just kinda adds to it. Um and I really think having like my YouTube channel probably has like helped get Drake's name out there a little bit more. When you, I was talking to someone the other day actually. Shout out to Kevin Morrison, who's a Fog Dog viewer, and he's he's got um, some contacts like on the Drake team who he knows, and um, he was saying to me that it's it's just such a good thing to have. And he, when he found out that his friend's daughter was going straight, he looked it up. Um, and looked for videos online and didn't really find anything other than my channel. So um, it's a really good way of kind of showing the college training and racing experience, I think. And yeah, I started it up and thought, I'm just going to give it a go. And yeah, I enjoyed it and kept it going. Yeah. And I think that. So I have a. Be I, there's a subscriber of mine who like, I don't know, maybe half or a third of his comments that he leaves on my channel are, uh, like, they they mention Drake University or how, oh, I'm the next, you know, you should go to Drake and become the next Fog Dog. Yeah. Or, uh, like, I, I, I announced my college decision a few uh, a few weeks ago, and I'm going yeah, to... So uh, uh, yeah, congratulations. Going to, thank you. Uh, going to St. Olaf in uh, Division Three. And he said, oh, well, uh, you know, you'll be the fog dog of D3. Yeah, So, nice. So uh, I think, you know, shout out to Al Al Alexander Hitch. I think he'll oh, be really excited to see. I know that name very well. Yeah. yeah. I think he'll be excited to see this video. But yeah. um, I think that your, your videos definitely have probably increased, at least, I mean, in a small uh, group of people like increase the popularity of Drake just yeah. with just with the running community because yeah. uh, I mean Drake's Drake, Drake hasn't had the best uh, the best I guess results in the last few years before yeah. you had arrived but yeah. um, now they they've they've seemed to be on the rise yeah no it's going well I believe it or not Drake actually went I think back to back to back as national cross champions in like the 1940s so oh, yeah. there's a there's a bit of history yeah. but it's kind of like in the past yeah. um it's been a few years but um yeah no it's it's good to have kind of come straight at a time when it was kind of looked at as a pretty small school i think when i came here like a lot of people well like we talked about said kind of why why are you going there what are you right. doing um 
you go into live in Iowa and you go into a pretty small school, but um, it's worked out well, and I think now I'm running pretty well, barring the appendix. Um, Baston is running really well. Jay has a good group of people um, that he's coaching, and um, yeah, no, it's really good. One other thing that the YouTube channel is pretty weird for, like when we had Drake Relays here, getting on for a month ago, like I. I don't know, warming up or going for my shakeout run, like being near the stadium, it's just like a lot of people, especially when it's a meet at Drake, recognize right. me from from YouTube. And I dread to think what it's like for people who are, I don't know, Olympians or like the on guys, like um, the coffee club boys and stuff like that. Um, but no, it's really good just having that um, for, for the running community, I think, yeah. yeah. I know for me personally, like I've had a few people come up to me during races and even today at the meet, I ran into a subscriber of mine in the bathroom. Nice. So, but like, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty fun just to have another group of supporters that you probably wouldn't have if you didn't have the YouTube channel and, yeah. uh, you know, it's fun to meet new people and uh, I, I mean, even, even if sometimes people only cheer for me because I'm a meme of their team or something, <laughs> uh, I think it's still fun. But, yeah. Uh, any, do you have any big plans moving forward with the channel? Not really. I never have done, to be honest. Like, just, <laughs> just keep it going. Yeah. Uh, it was, it's funny because like, the first year and a half, so from January 2020 until July 2021, or maybe, yeah, late June 2020, 21 um so like 18 months basically i did a video every single week at the same time um with the old like bonus video in there as well uh and then after the outdoor season last year i went back to england and i was like i've got to have a break from it because it, it gets to a point where if you're trying to post a video every week you you're coming out with some rubbish some weeks like um and a lot of the time the the pretty boring videos basically are the ones that take the most time because you're trying to like come up with an idea and for those like some of them I'd have to like come up with a script or like I, I don't know stuff like that so I fully gave up on that um, and I just went back to I'm just gonna post whenever I want I think for a little bit I was going to a different day and trying to get back into weekly videos but um, basically after I took that break after a year and a half of every single week um, now I just kind of post whenever I want and film whenever I want. If I'm going to have, you know, three weeks off without a video, um, so be it. And if, if I post three videos in a week, then brilliant. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of just like enjoying it, um, not worrying about what I film, but filming when I want. And it, I, I way prefer it that way because then you, if you don't feel like filming a video, you don't film a video. You don't have to be a nuisance at training with like, interviewing people who aren't really sure if they want to be on camera or not, um, yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, now it's much more kind of organic. It's just like, um, if I want to film a video, I'll bring the camera to training. Hopefully someone there can film. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of basically the structure of the channel. Um, and hopefully moving forward, it'll be the same thing. So um, if I end up in England running, hopefully I can find someone who can film videos over there. Um, shout out Fog Dog Senior, he's done quite a lot in the past, and my mum. So, and if I end up in America, then hopefully, yeah, film training and races and just kind of keep it pretty similar to what it's been, um, just probably not in college, yeah. yeah. But it might be back at Drake, I have to reiterate yeah. that point. I have no <laughs> idea, no idea where I'm gonna end up, yeah. so. Yeah, um, I'm not locked into anything. But yeah, like you said about how like you know you get tired of it. I know for me, like towards the end of a season, it's like oh man, if I have to I have to post another racing another video of me racing the sixteen hundred, then I'm gonna lose yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Or like at the end of the summer, it's like oh I have another just work. Here's another workout that I did. It's just yeah, it gets it gets pretty monotonous. So I yeah. I totally understand that. But uh, when you first, I guess. Because I'm I'm gonna be going to college and I hope to start you know filming stuff with the team and but like what was your what was the initial reaction of your team when you first started it and I guess did did the guys like were they pretty responsive with it did they like it or was it 
Like, I, I guess, just what was the team's reaction? Yeah, everyone was, like, really cool with it. Um, I feel like uh, for the first few weeks and months, and even still now for some people, it's, like, people found it pretty tough, like, talking to the camera. Um, if I, you know, ask them questions about, like, a workout or something or races they've got coming up. Um, but basically, I... I pretty much filmed the first video um, without anyone from the cross country team who I'm with all the time. None of them were in it, and Jay wasn't in it either. So um, by the time it actually came to like filming, you know, the first kind of proper video where I'm actually running, um, I'd already got a video down that I was ready to post. Um, so I kind of had like. The idea of it in my head if you know what I mean so I already kind of knew where I was going with it um, so I was a little bit more confident with it I feel like if I hadn't started the channel and I just turned up one day with a camera at practice like it would have been a little bit more weird but by the time most people were kind of exposed to it they'd already seen my first video so they kind of understood it a little bit I guess um, but Jay was really good with it he's always been really good with it um, he is more than happy, at least he acts more than happy to um, speak on camera. He came on um, your podcast. I yeah, saw, yeah, he's been on the podcast idea. right here, actually. Um, or maybe we were in the room upstairs, I can't remember. But um, yeah, uh, he's always been really good with being on video and being on the channel. And he'll speak about workouts and speak about races that are coming up. Um, and then over time, the rest of the team have basically got pretty on board with it um and everyone knows that you know the more involved people are the better it does and the more entertaining a video is so um there's a few people on the team who like aren't that kind of into it but they'll still happily speak on camera and then there's others um aziz for example um like he he sends the videos to his family back home and says you got to watch this and they all watch as well so Overall, yeah, everyone's pretty cool with it. Did yeah. you ever, I guess, did you ever have, like, did you ever talk to Jay about, like, when you first started it, if it would be okay, if, like, he approved of it, or did you just go for it? Not really, yeah, to be honest, I just went for it. Um, yeah, I, he's a pretty easygoing guy, um, and after kind of getting to know him a little bit throughout the fall semester, when I came back with my camera um, in January 2020, I was like, oh, I'm just going to just gonna do it and I turned up, I actually had a one-on-one -on -one workout with Jay and I was like, I'm starting a YouTube channel, can you help film some stuff? And straight away he held the camera for like 20 minutes while I did my full workout and that, that was it after that. He was locked in um, and there was no going back. So yeah, no, he's been, he's been good with it. And um, I'm kind of glad like I didn't really ask, I think I just kind of, said I'm going to do it because yeah. maybe he would have been like a little bit weird um, but it, it, it worked out and I feel like that's kind of a something that happens a lot like until people see the final product or they see that something's working they'll question it and like be a little bit skeptical um, not that Jay would have been but who knows um, so yeah I think being able to kind of see where the channel's at now and show that there are people who are genuinely interested. Like if, if people out there wanna get into that kind of thing, I think you have gotta just give it a go. Um, and at the end of the day, if you don't like what you're filming um, and don't think it's entertaining, then just don't post it. But yeah. 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 Well, I wanna move on to some rapid fire questions from, uh, from the audience, as well as just, you know, some classic Parker Max questions. But um, the first one came from a viewer who uh, asked if you would ever go for the park run world record, which park run, if you are unfamiliar, is like, I guess, a free uh, race every Sunday, Saturday, Saturday yeah. and uh, 5k, yeah, 5k every week. But uh, the current world record is 1348. So do you have your eyes set on it? I mean, not particularly, but it is something I would definitely, you know, if I was in shape and it aligned with my schedule um for sure i'd give it a crack um i think a thing with parkrun is like you've got to find a good course and like be there on the right day and um 
that's a pretty legit time. So um, I think I'd have to be in pretty good shape for it. But yeah, for sure, if I can get a park run world record, uh, something I'd be pretty happy with, I think. Uh, so you spent significant time here in the U.S. and I guess, uh, but and I guess in Australia. But um, do you have a favorite cross country course either in America or Australia, and a favorite track that you like to race at? Um, cross country. Uh, I feel like I've seen a few really nice ones. Um, Florida State, where National Cross was end of twenty twenty one, was really cool I guess like I didn't run well and I didn't really enjoy it but it's a pretty cool course like it's um it goes through some pretty cool stuff and you're you're running on different surfaces and stuff like that um and as cross-country courses go like it's, it's pretty pretty decent um it's got a massive hill every lap um Oklahoma State I think has got to take the cake for cross-country like unreal course like the grass is mown perfectly um, it's got hills, yeah, I'd, I'd say Oklahoma State as well though, University of Iowa is another pretty impressive yeah. one. Um, the thing with cross country though in America is like most courses are so nice and like the grass is so perfect and like pretty firm to run on. Um, so if anyone's like in England watching this, I've, yeah. I've never really done a proper English cross country um, just because I grew up in Australia and Australia is probably even worse than America, <laughs> like it's just dry, um, you, you can run pretty quick on most cross country courses, um, so I feel like in America we're pretty, I would call it lucky um, to have generally decent weather um, with nice firm fast courses, I prefer it that way to yeah. To the mod. Yeah, you go. If you ever watch, like on YouTube, like the cross country, uh, if you ever watch an American cross country race on YouTube, you'll see the comment section. Everyone's yeah. like, oh, it's you, need to, you need to go to England and yeah. look, at, look at what they're racing. So, yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, I, I definitely like to check out an English uh, cross country race. Yeah. Proper, proper cross country. I think but, it's pretty bad, but yeah. yeah. Then for tracks, I, I don't know. I, there's some good ones all over the place. So I've got to say Haywood was pretty impressive racing there. Um, yeah, but then also back in Brisbane, uh, QE2, um, which was the Commonwealth Games Stadium in 1982, I think, um, is pretty impressive as well. So tracks are tracks, like 400 meter circle. Drake Stadium as well, pretty, yeah. pretty nice. So um, yeah, I'm pretty happy. But, any track really yeah uh what's your opinion about vegemite since you are awful from australia wow it was so bad i i really don't know how people can like have it and actually enjoy it i think they're just pretending to look cool but no i i don't know how it still exists to be honest and i don't know how when it got invented they said this is going to be a great product that's going to sell well because yeah if you haven't tried vegemite uh Give it a go, but pretty bad. Have you tried it? I have not. No, it's but pretty bad. I had to ask since you. Since yeah. It's yeah, yeah, no, it's proper, good question, proper but... Australian cuisine. Oh yeah, yeah, cuisine. I don't know if I'd go that far, but um, yeah. But not spe my favorite. speaking of uh, cuisine, let's talk about Iowa cuisine. Have you had the chance to have any Casey's pizza or um, I guess? Poncheros, burritos, any anything like that? Um, yeah, I have actually. We've literally three weeks ago, a Casey's opened up over the road, and the other night I had a slice of cheese pizza from there. I've never tried it before, and I don't know. It was it was decent. Like yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't rave about <laughs> it, and I'm not going to be going back there every night to yeah. to get more. Um, but it, it wasn't bad, and I think it was only a dollar, so it's pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, Pancheros, I think I've tried, uh, but it was just like a standard like burrito or maybe a burrito bowl. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't like rave about it, but um, yeah. What else is there? Like we've got a Jethro's over the road, like barbecue, um, burgers. Uh, we've got a pizza place yeah. down the road. What about corn on the cob? Have you? Have oh, you corn had? on the cob. I, 
I don't know if I've had one in Iowa to be honest, but I've I've grown up with that. Okay. Um, England and Australia corn on the cob is like pretty popular. Um, I'd rarely have it, but I've had a few in my time. I don't know if I've ever had one in Iowa to yeah. be honest. I mean, summer is usually like the best time to get it. So if you if you often are going home and you're missing out on the peak peak uh, yeah. sweet corn season, I'm I'm trying to think what other popular foods in Iowa, but um, I think you've kind of yeah. named most of them. I mean, Other Casey, than that, like, what you said about Casey's pizza might ruffle a few feathers. And, uh, yeah. But so Casey's breakfast pizza is also what people really like. I um, haven't actually had Casey's breakfast pizza, but I hear it's... Tomorrow morning. Yeah. There's one just over the road, so... Yeah. Um, the next question is, uh, who would win, Fog Dog or Griff the Drake Bulldog? And I didn't specify who... Yeah, like, what fighting or yeah. racing, yeah. <laughs> um... An eating contest, I think he'd have me. That bulldog is so fat. He's got to be so unhealthy, to be honest. Like, he, bulldogs in general are not the healthiest creatures. Like, yeah. I think they, like, struggle to breathe. And I think, I think the original Griff is, like, on his last legs, to be honest. They, they had to get in a new one, George. Um, and he's, like, the young, fresh, fit bulldog. And even he's not looking great, to be honest. So, um, anything to do with running, I'd like to put my money... On myself, um, but I think at the moment with the appendix, they might they might give me a run for my money. So um, yeah. So in true per, uh, investigative reporting fashion, you know, I went on your Instagram. Yeah, I saw so, that picture. <laughs> so so we have this photo here. Yeah. And as you as you can see, it, you have Fog Dog printed there on the back of your uh, yeah. jersey. Caption squash with the boys hashtag fog dog is back. Wow. So yeah. how how like how long have you had the nickname fog dog? I think that was in twenty fourteen. Um and yeah. yeah uh either really late twenty fourteen or really early. I can't remember. September two thousand fourteen. Oh wow, okay. That's September twenty sixth. Yeah, oh yeah. I was gonna say the twenty fifth. Um yeah, no, I just went through a phase of like uh, playing squash with the boys like that was just like one of those days we'd hang out we'd go and muck about at like the local mall or I don't know we ended up just playing squash one day but um that's that singlet I'm wearing with fog dog in the back that's um from the touch team I was in touch rugby when I was um 12 so a couple of years before that um and so I guess it goes back all the way to 2011 it was when I got that single with Fog Dog on it. Um, so technically from 2011, so 11 years, but um, I think that was kind of like, it hasn't really been a big nickname. My, my nickname usually is like Foggy. People call me Foggy, um, but I just thought Fog Dog was yeah. a good way of naming the channel. And, and it fits well with uh, Drake Bulldogs. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that but, kind of uh, was pretty big. So final question, and I asked this at... It NCAA hasn't changed. Uh, I was going to ask if he's been to Taco Bell and what's his favorite item, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, I knew that was going to be in there, and I still haven't <laughs> been. Um, although, the other night, um, Connor Biznik, who's on the team, his girlfriend got Taco Bell, and she had, like, some quesadilla thing and I tried a chicken and cheese quesadilla I think okay and it was all right okay um yeah that, so I technically mean, that's, that's, I have that, that's, that should be your reaction when you eat Taco Bell it's just just all right I feel it's like just... that's react my reaction with like a lot of stuff I mean Casey's pizza I was like oh this is all right like I wouldn't <laughs> run back there to get more but like it, it was it was good enough you yeah. know yeah well so, um, uh Adam, yeah. thank you so much for uh, joining me today. That was awesome, and thanks for answering all my questions. Uh, yeah, sweet. Subscribe to me. the Fog Dog exclusive and Fog Dog and Bastion. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, and no, I've enjoyed having a chat, and good luck this weekend. Yeah. Tune in for. I assume there'll be a video on it. Yeah, the definitely. State sixteen hundred. Yeah, should be good. All right. Thanks for well, watching as well. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I enjoyed interviewing. 
It was a fun time with Adam Fogg, Fog Dog. It was a great opportunity just to chat and really get to know each other as we've known each other for quite a while, but we've never really talked extensively other than at NCAA Regionals. My inquiry of the episode has to be one that's relevant to the video, and that is what has been your strangest or worst running injury. And as you saw, uh, Adam Fogg had to get his appendix removed in probably the worst part of the season, right before NCAA Regionals, so he will not be running at the national meet. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, run to the max, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.